All right, in this section, I'm gonna go over a couple tips and tricks for roofing around dormers. Because this is a real common detail for people to have on their roofs, I wanted to go through a couple of key places um, where I see people making mistakes a lot and where we have a lot of leaks, okay? So, as you can see on the model, we've got the shingles uh, worked up down around the base, coming up the side. Um, I didn't, uh, the model's a little small to show you all the flashing details, so we haven't included that here. Um, that you're gonna use the same flashing details that we do in the chimney flashing section. So if you wanna learn how to do the flashing details down here in the front and going up the sides, how to deal with the corner boards, all that's covered in the uh, detail in the video on, shing on shingling around uh, your chimney. Okay, so I'm gonna skip through that part um, we just kind of cut our shingles to fit around here and I want to point out a couple uh, of areas where I see a lot of issues. Okay, so number one, up here underneath the soffit, um, you're going to want to make a piece of flashing. Now, the model, this is obviously not to scale on a big house, it'd be a lot easier uh, to demonstrate this, so I'm just going to try to walk you through this and show you how we do it. But to, to, to flash underneath here, you're pretty much going to use an L-shaped piece of flashing. Now, this is a piece of step, galvanized step flashing. Um, it's probably going to be, it'd be too small on a regular size dormer to use something this small. So you're going to want to use a piece of trim coil like we use in the chimney section uh, or another piece of flashing off a roll. But just for, to give you an idea, really what we do is make an L-shaped piece of flashing and fit it up in here. Again, it's hard to show how to nail it here because it's so small, but are you going to put a couple nails in there? Um, you don't get a lot of leaks up, up in here because it's hard for water to get blown all the way back up in here, but you do want to close that area off. Um, I've seen a lot of problems with squirrels and stuff uh, getting, getting up in these un under the uh, soffit right here. So make a piece of flashing like this. It's usually going to go over top of the shingles like your, your apron flashing does um, at the base of the dormer. So hope that helps with that. Um, most importantly though, and where I see a lot of problems is where the shingles are flashed up against the fascia. Okay, so for, for this example, I've taken the fascia off. Um, it went in, went in here and I'll show you in a second. I'll put it back and you'll see how it is. But um, I see a lot of problems with the flashing right at this area. So I wanna show you how to do it. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe so you can be a part of my channel. You can watch all my videos that cover complete stages of both shingle and metal roofing. There's tons more content coming out soon about all aspects of roofing, including skylights and trim and sheds and whatever you're interested in. First of all, you're really going to have to take your fascia board off to flash this one correctly because you want to get your piece of step flashing to go behind it. And in a second here, I'm going to show you what that looks like. But so carefully remove the fascia board. Um, if you're good about it, you can take it off and you just need to put some new nails in it, re it, repaint it or whatever. Um, you should be able to take this off without damaging it. So <clears throat> um, after the fascia is off, we've got the shingles run up here to where the piece of flashing is gonna go. I've got this piece of step flashing. I'm gonna give a little more detail in the chimney section about using this, but um, you know, the basic idea, as you can see, uh, I've already trimmed it so that it's gonna fit up under here. I fabricated the piece of flashing, cut this angle so it'd fit up in here, and I got up in here. Um, ju just like with the other step flashing, you really don't wanna see much of it, so I've trimmed it off so that it, it's gonna end, the bottom edge of it is gonna land right where uh, the nail line is right where the next shingle is going to come over uh, and cover most of this flashing. So, um, but this is the key point. You get this piece of flashing up behind the fascia. Now we're going to reinstall this fascia board on top of it. You're not going to see much of it. Um, and we'll, we'll show you this in a second, but a really important detail that I want you to take note of when you're putting your fascia board back, because I see this all the time, is people have the tendency to want to cut their fascia board so it's like, jammed up against the roof and real tight. But really what you want to do is cut this edge of the fascia board uh, back so that it's about an inch off the roof. Because this is wood, it's going to absorb moisture. I mean, even if it's hardy plank, um, if it's jammed up on the roof, it's going to absorb moisture. So you want to leave a gap between the roof and the flashing in this edge of the fascia board. So um, it might be like that already. Chances are it's not. Chances are if it's an old roof, you've already got some rot on this piece of, uh, piece of board. So you can trim that back, you may have to replace the board or whatever um, before you put it back in over top of your flashing. All 
All right, so now that we've got our flashing well seated behind the fascia, I got the fascia back on. Um, I'm going to make a couple points about getting the shingles in here and then roofing up and over uh, the top of the dormer. A um, couple points that I want to make. First of all, when I did put this flashing in, I didn't show you this on the video, but I nailed the flashing in to the side of the subfascia behind this one here. And not you don't want to nail it through the roof, especially in this location where you've got a lot of water coming down here. Uh, you don't want any nails going through your flashing. So I did, in the course of filming the rest of the video, we put a nail in here. I'm making the point, please don't do that. You want to keep your nails holding it here, holding the flashing on. So now something interesting has happened um, as we're running our shingle courses up here and over to the dormer. And uh, I think it's a good lesson uh, for other areas of the roof because this is going to happen if you have plenty of uh, penetrations. Uh, different pipes, skylights, chimneys, something like that, this is going to happen. And so what, what happened here is we've got our, our step off on the shingles like this, right? And so this is what the next shingle would look like uh, when I put it into place. And you see what happened is um, it's just leaving this little gap right here. We want the shingle to go all the way basically next to the fascia, but it's left this really small little gap right there. And obviously you can't cut a two inch wide piece of shingle and slip it up in there, especially we don't want a butt joint right here where all this water is being uh, focused coming off that valley off the dormer. So what we're going to have to do to eliminate this little gap is come back here, interrupt our pattern a little bit and put in a smaller tab here, which is going to allow us to have a big full section of shingle right here. So that's going to come up. Uh, in numerous places on your roof, it might be when you reach the end of the roof and you've just got a little tab. So what you got to do is come back here um, and sort of interrupt your pattern a little bit to give you a bigger piece uh, on the far side that, you, that you're that you working towards. So when we come back over here, the real consideration with the, the new tab that we're going to put in is we've got our nails in place here and we don't want the new butt joint between the smaller piece and the big piece that's going to the dormer to fall anywhere near these nails. So I'm going to cut a piece uh, that goes from this butt joint to right here and then we'll land right in between these two nails and take the next piece uh, all the way over to the dormer. All right, <clears throat> so we got this shingle on. It's down over top of the step flashing underneath the valley. Uh, we, we brought our next course in. Again, we had some of the same issues with this course where we we're gonna left with some little pieces and a butt joint right here uh, where all this water's coming down. So again, we just played with our reveal, uh, the, the stagger over here and the nail patterns and everything like that. Cut this little tab so we've got more or less a full section here going up in behind the valley and realistically uh, you missed this in the footage but I got a little ahead of myself and had this part of the roof on what you really want to do and, and this will be clear after you watch the segment on valleys um, put this first uh, put this, this this shingle down first and then these shingles come over top because we're going to do the cut valley uh, we're going to cut the shingles on this facet of the roof and you'll see that in just a second here but at any rate we got this one going up under these uh, these shingles now we're going to finish off this section of roof and bring it over to the ridge and I'm going to show you how to tie together the top of the ridge uh, after we get this valley done. All right, so we've worked up to the top of the valley where this dormer comes in. This is a real tricky spot. I've had a lot of questions about this area over the years, so I want to show you how we're going to work this valley. We've got two valleys coming in here, the ridge, and we're going to come across the top. So it's a little hard harder to imagine here. Our model's a little smaller and the angles are a little tighter. The roof kind of ends right here. You, you know, you can imagine the roof coming up for a few more feet or whatever. So it's a little harder to, to illustrate on here, but you're going to get the idea about how we make this transition. And you want to be real careful here because 
you are got these valleys coming in here and you're going to have this, this cap shingle that's going to go in here and it needs to go in several different directions. So uh, you're going to be real vulnerable to a leak right at this point where the ridge dies into the other one. So um, we're going to put this piece of valley in here. I'm going to show you in a second, but before you do that, um, if you're unsure of it or the geometry of your roof is making it tricky to, uh, to tighten this up like you want it, um, I'd encourage you to just take a little, uh, put a little backup in. You could either use a little piece of felt like this, maybe some uh, weather watch, ice and water shield um, up and over this area under the shingles where you're never going to see it. Um, you could do something like that or also put a big bead of uh, sealant down. Uh, behind this shingle. So at any rate, we've got the shingle, we've got the ridge caps run, we've got the valley done, it's already cut. Again, we're going to cover those areas in, the, in those respective sections, so I didn't show us doing that in this one. Um, we've got this, the shingles coming over here. Um, now again, on our model, it's a little tight and everything like that, but realistically, this shingle right here, we've got this cut off in the valley. This one you're going to want to bring over onto this other side and it's going to get it, it would just get a notch in it like we're, I'm going to show you with the with the shingle that comes over the top here so um, but for the model it's a little hard to do so this shingle is going to kind of come over here and um, at any rate so you've reached in with your your uh, your ridge caps here I want you to notice that I've been real careful uh, on this last ridge cap we had to trim it a pretty good amount but I've got the nail up here normally you'd want your nails further down here but we're in the valley so we always want to stay six inches out of the middle of the valley so I've had to nail these uh, this last ridge cap a little higher up here and then this is another of the ridge cap shingles that we're using and what I've done to make a transition is just cut a slit in it right here up to the glue line and that's going to allow it to come in here and break because like I said it's got to be bent in several di different directions and it's never going to bend like this without the slit. So we're going to bring it in here. Uh, make sure you got it lined up. Again before you put this shingle down the weather watch, ice and water shield to cover this joint, maybe some sealant or whatever underneath the shingles. We're going to cover this break up with this next piece that comes across but uh, you can never be too careful in this area. And um, then we're going to nail it up here. Again we don't want to nail down here because it's going to be in the valley. So I'm going to put a couple nails in here and then I'm going to bring this next, next piece across. Okay, so I got this ridge cap in here and this is the next full shingle that's going to go on. And uh, I'm just lining it up because I'm going to cut a V out of this. So I just got it butted up against here, which is where it's going to end. And, and you can see uh, it's got a couple inches down, so that's going to really determine the depth uh, of the V uh, in the shingle. And you want to be real careful here too as you're getting over the ridge not to uh, let this shingle ride too high and get off your nail lines. Now realistically if there was more roof up here, you'd have snapped some lines so it's going to be easier to keep this straight. But that's just always the challenge when you're coming over these dormers is to uh, make sure that the shingle keeps straight and you're not pivoting on, on the top of the dormer. So. Um, I'm going to get this lined up like this um, and we're going to cut, a, cut the V in here and then the shingle is going to be ready to go down. Alright, so as you can see we've got everything lined up and part of the process is just cutting out a little bit of this notch little by little, testing it to make sure it, it fits right and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done but just take your time, uh, make the cut small and keep working up. Um, there's no real formula to make it right the first time. Uh, you just kind of got to figure out depending on your, your different geometry of roof. So um, we've got this notch cut and when I got this all laid in there this little break in the shingles here was a little, uh, little more exposed than I wanted to, so we just went ahead and brought another ridge cap shingle in here. Again, if the roof extended a little more, it, it might be a little more obvious, but uh, I'm just going to nail this in here uh, before we bring the other ridge cap over, and again, that's going to give us some good protection here. Definitely a great idea, put, put some sealant or uh, roof cement down here uh, to embed this in uh, before I nail this on. Okay, so I got, this, I got this shingle on, 
and uh, we got this all notched out right so that it fits over and just again take your time to make sure that uh, you're here again if you had some lines it'd be easier we got it like this we're gonna go ahead and nail it here and again keep out of the valley or the the tight the tight uh, spots here where the uh, where the two valleys and the ridge come in and um, that's gonna finish it off um, we've you know done a lot of these over the years and I'll just give you this advice is it's never gonna sit as flat and look as neat as you probably want it um, if the roof pitch was a little uh, a little flatter this is a 12 12 um, the shingles would sit down would sit down a little bit better of course these are brand new shingles it's not real hot out um, so the shingles aren't as pliable they're a little stiffer in the heat all this would sit down a little bit better and run a little tighter but this last couple shingle up here and this one here are never going to lay as flat as the rest of the shingles in the field this one's always going to be kicked up a little bit um, because like I said, you're trying to go in several different planes of the roof at once and it's just never going to lay flat. So just accept that before you go and when it's all done, if it's all kicked up a little bit, that's just normal and that's how it looks. But we've got several layers of redundancy here at this, uh, this point at the ridge to keep the water out. And um, that about covers it for roofing up and over your dormer. I'm going to show you on the whiteboard uh, a couple ideas to keep your layout uh, straight and everything as you come over the top. So my models didn't give me every opportunity to demonstrate to you every technique that you might need to roof around some different, uh, different types of roofs, uh, layouts that you uh, may encounter. Now, it's not possible to come up with every scenario uh, that you might see, but I'm just gonna give you some tips here that might help you troubleshoot uh, something that comes up. Because one thing that is very common is to be roofing along and you have either here like a, this would be like a gable, uh, section coming out like an addition or maybe this is just a big dormer uh, like we've got but that it, it goes all the way down to the to the eave line and doesn't allow you to come through here um, and so the challenge is not here you can roof this part really easily but then you've got to drop down here and roof this section and get your tabs all lined up and get the reveal right and everything so um, this this is how you're going to approach this situation again there might be this might be a dormer um, something like that that's, that's in your way. So, uh, like I said, start over here, you're gonna roof up, you're gonna roof over here, do your valleys, work, work whatever you gotta do here, and then come up over the top. Now, it's easy to keep your lines straight. Bring, you can bring these uh, courses straight out here. That's pretty easy. Um, if you're having trouble uh, keeping these lines straight, you can always measure uh, from the course up to the top of the ridge, uh, and then you can use that measurement to help transcribe a mark over here so you can finish snapping a straight line across here and keep it even in relation to the ridge. Um, so that'll help you bring the measurements uh, for these courses across, but you've also got the challenge of uh, aligning the different ends of the tab uh, as you go down the roof. And so uh, here's a technique for doing that. Um, basically, you've roofed up over to here, and now you're gonna start need to think about roofing this area. What you wanna do is measure the distance from the end of one of these shingles to this eave over here, or to this gable end over here. So call that three inches or 30 inches or 30 feet or whatever it's gonna be for you. Um, and then you can go down here and measure the same distance back over. So you're gonna have two reference points here. You can snap a vertical line. You wanna do the same thing six inches over um, again so 30 feet, six inches, whatever your measurement is, and then uh, snap another bond line here. And then this is gonna give you a reference point so that you can start roofing this way um, to bring your shingles up here and then keep the tabs aligned. One thing that you do wanna think about is uh, how many courses you're gonna have as you come up because you don't wanna get up to this course and have the butt joint here on this, this, this course right here uh, and have a butt joint on the course that's right below it. So uh, figure out the number of courses that you're gonna have and then make sure that uh, you're either starting on this line or on this line so that when you make it up here, uh, those butt joints don't, don't even up. Of course, to bring your horizontal lines across, all you really need to do is, uh, you know, you can just measure down and make marks, uh, corresponding marks and <clears throat> snap lines across here to give you that as a reference point. 
Um, but having these two lines um, come across here and then come down is the, the essential point in sort of roofing around these obstructions and keeping this course of shingle straight um, so that it will meet, meet these shingles as they come across and they don't want to get off centered or, or crooked or something like that. So these are called bond lines. If you'd like the complete series for yourself on how to do shingle or metal roofing, you can go to my website, roofingintelligence.com, and there you can get a membership to either stream or you can get a DVD in the mail. It'll show you how to do all the steps for either of those types of roofing. Enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching.